Hey friends, we're learning C-sharp. We've gone over strings and numbers. Now we're going to talk about branching and ifs, if statements. It's all about the if statement. That's really the number one thing that you use when you're programming. Ifs and, and loops. Yeah, I think so. All right. So let's go back over to our if statements and loops. This is the conditional logic tutorial on Microsoft Learn. We're just going step by step. Reminder that we did strings and numbers, and now we are in branches and loops. You can follow along, and we're following along inside of Visual Studio Code using the dev kit. So if statements are how you make decisions, okay? Let's go and do this. We're going to expand our number example and we're going to add an if statement to it. I'm just copy pasting that directly from the Microsoft Learn information here. And this is a, a little bit of a trick because we have an if statement that also has math in it, mm. okay? So we have our int A and our int B, and then we said if, something, and then what's going on here? Is this significant white space or not? No, it's not. It's not significant white space. So if, then do a thing. And, and it reads like English, right? If A plus B is greater than 10, mm -hmm. then do a thing. Makes sense. Now, before we had said, when we were doing integer math, we would say uh, int C equals A plus B. And then I could say, if C is greater than 10, does it matter? No, it's the same thing. Okay. So it's totally fine that we didn't have this kind of intermediate or temporary thing. Variable, here. right. Okay. So I'm going to control C my way back. Do I need to put this in parentheses? Do I have to have nested parentheses where I have a little extra explicit parentheses around this? For this specific expression, no. Sometimes, though, depending on the order of operations and, and your calculation, you may need to do that mm -hmm. to tell the compiler, hey, evaluate this first, then that, then this. And when you say order of operations, when I was in school, I think they called it ped mass, and it was like, what is it, parentheses, parentheses exponents, exponents, division, you know, multiplication, yeah. addition, subtraction. Where and I came from, they called it bod mass. Bod mass? Brackets instead of parentheses. Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. Cool. Yeah. Very similar. All right. So, Order of operations matters, and the way that you get around order of operations is with extra being explicit. Exactly. Being more explicit. Yep. We keep seeing that being explicit, being intentional. And it's kind of cool that in Visual Studio Code, because we have the C-sharp dev kit installed, we're getting those colored um, parentheses or brackets. We see that we're getting yellow and then a different color, and that makes it a little easier to see. To see, yep. Yeah, yeah, because sometimes you might find yourself in a situation like this, and you're like, I don't know what's going on. And you hover, and they're like, invalid expression. What's that parentheses doing there? We can see them better with the coloring. Now, you said this, this white space doesn't matter. Is it just a tab, or is it a bunch of spaces? And why isn't it on one line? And how do I decide that? I don't know where this should be, and what is the relationship between the if statement and the thing that comes after it? If it were me personally, I would add um, curly braces to make it more clear. Okay. Um, but C sharp does allow the next statement after the if to be attached to the if. Okay. So if you say if a thing, you can have the very next statement be the thing. The but thing, you, the result. But uh, you're saying you should put brackets, curly brackets. We call them curly brackets. Curly brackets. Sometimes Absolutely. people will call them mustaches. People call it mustaches? If you turn your head like this, it looks like a little I see, I got fancy it. person's mustache. mustache. Distinguished mustache. Distinguished mustache. <laughs> okay. So that is the same with those curly braces there. And is that explicit? That's explicit because you're saying, I'm going to run this block of code if this condition is true. So the thing you put inside the if is called the condition. And it's a an expression. Um, we didn't talk about Booleans, but this expression, a plus b greater than 10, will evaluate to either true or false. Mm -hmm. That's just a good opportunity to talk about Booleans. So we talked about integer, we talked about long, we talked about strings. strings. I can say, we saw before, int c equals a plus b. That's still an integer. Right. And I can say bool or boolean, either one. That's right. Capital boolean or lowercase bool. You said that's true or false. Right. Is there anything in between? Is truthy a thing? Not maybe. Falsy? Nope, it's just no. true or false. True or false. Yep. That's it. Okay. So then I, can I say bool, uh, let's say, B. Oh, I can't, can't call it B. It B. That's, a, that's a great <laughs> example. What if I called it B? I can't call it B. There's already a B. Aha. Uh -huh. right? Got it. We'll just call it, I don't know, my test. Yep. 
uh, equals, and then let's take C greater than 10. Okay, so right now it's saying, well, it's unnecessary. Why is it unnecessary? Because I, I haven't used, used my test anywhere, yeah. Right. It's trying to help you. But. So we took this chunk of code right here and we got rid of it and we're saying if, and if needs to be true or false, you said? Correct. Okay. So if my test, and we'll go and use our comments, is true, right? This is a way to go and if you're learning to code, it's okay to put as many of those as you possibly want. You could even say here will be true or false. Well commented code makes everyone happier. It does. Yes, absolutely. Think about future you. That's a great point. Reading so your code. The code comments are for not for you, the audience, it's for future Scott. That's right. Who just touched the microphone and made a noise. <laughs> Sorry about that. Now I have a pull up. <clears throat> so we have if test is true, let's see if this actually works. I'm going to go ahead and clear my, my terminal here. I'm going to type in clear. Or you can also press Control L if you like a hotkey. .NET run, the answer is greater than 10. So that's interesting. That ran. Now, what if we made an answer that is not greater than 10? We'll have a number like 8. Right. So then my test is going to be false. Nothing, Nothing happened. happened. Yeah. Yeah. So that's not good. So then I, I have if it's true, where's my kind of like else it's false? Where does that go? My otherwise, else. Yeah. Otherwise. So the keyword you want to use mm -hmm. for the other condition, if the condition that um, in the if is not true, okay. is else, the else keyword. All right. So you're saying if my test is true, console right line, the answer is greater than 10. Otherwise, or else. The answer is less than 10. Okay. So this is a great point. You said otherwise. You can see here that otherwise, of course, is not a thing. <laughs> it's like, I don't know, the type. It's not a keyword or, not a, or not, a variable. It's not a thing. But that's a, a comment there. Else, see how it turned purple, is a keyword. Look how clean that is. If it's true, then it's greater than. Otherwise, it's less than. I'm going to go and just tidy up a bit, and we'll go and put this back the way it was, it was A plus B is greater than 10. Get rid of all this intermediate stuff. And then we're going to say, if we do the math, it's greater than 10. If it's true, otherwise, it's false. Can I have more? Can I go if, 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 and keep asking them one after the other? Yeah, so you can chain these together by saying, you know, if condition, else if condition, else if condition. And then after all those conditions are evaluated, the very last thing that runs is the else. Right. And again, you don't have to use curly braces, but Fowler agrees. You get one line. Oh, you only get one line. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a great point. So this works as a reach on one line. But if you had a second line, it's not involved anymore. How would it know? Yeah. OK. And then what is this called? If I put something inside of that, that's called either a block or a scope. A block, a scope. That's right. Right. And that's as, as many as you have, and then they match each other. And again, in Visual Studio Code, I'm going to just click on one, and you see what it does? It actually highlights, highlights the other one. It's matching friend. And that can be really useful, especially if they, if they run away. You're going to say, where's the other guy? And he's, his buddy's over there. So that's good to remember as well. OK? Now, this is, again, another reminder. I want to just call this out, because David called it out earlier. The indentation is for human readers. It's not for the compiler. Could this all be on one crazy line as well? It could be, and then you get really confused as to which one applies to which. <laughs> okay. But yes, you can do it. Yep. And this calls out what you said in one of our previous videos, that the C-sharp language doesn't treat white space. As significant. As significant. There you go. All right. That's excellent. So we recommend putting your curly braces. Now, there's some arguments in the world about where your curly braces go. Only one right way, though. Uh, I see. I won't say it, but... So you're, you're, not, you're not a fan of, of that. I used to be. You used to be? Yeah. But again, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Right? It doesn't matter. It works the same because it's being explicit. All right? So that's important to note out. Last thing we want to call out when we do our ifs is you can have these composite ifs. That's pretty complicated. There's a lot going on here. And we're being super explicit, and then we've introduced this new operator. Yeah. 
okay? That operator is the AND operator. So here, let's go ahead and grab this whole chunk of code here. And we'll go like this. We're going to add a bunch of numbers together. And we're saying, all right, if a plus b plus c is greater than 10, greater than 10, and you need two ampersands for that. This is not an and. Not right? one, that's right. It's right. a different kind of and. Different kind of and. We'll talk about it later. This is a Boolean and a equals b. So that one is saying that the first number is equal to the second number. And that double equals is not the same as a single equals. So the double ampersand is and, and the double equals means... Are you equal? Are you equal, as right. opposed to this one, which means an assignment. That's right. Right. And that's important to point out. And those things can be a little bit confusing, but you get it after a while, and it, that's it right. looks wrong if you don't... And you get it. errors in the actual editor if you say A equals B, because the compiler says that's not a Boolean condition. I, can, I can't evaluate that, you know, A yeah. equals B is not true or false. Right. So you get an error saying... And uh, that's another great point to make sure that you're doing the right thing here. Uh, the dev kit and the Visual Studio Editor is warning you, and you've got to read these. People don't read these errors. Read the errors. They, they just right. see that they're error and they freak out. Panic. It is telling you exactly what's going on. So now we have uh, a nice composite if statement. Go and run it. The number is not greater than 10, and the first number is not, or the first number is not equal to the second. This is an interesting one because one of these is true, right? That's true. And that's false. But in this case, we don't know which one because we batched them up. We'd have to go and change that if we wanted to make a difference. All right? Cool. The other thing that we can do is or. This is a little bit weird. These are called pipes. The pipes represent or. So is it the case that it is these numbers added up is greater to 10 or the first number is equal to the second. That's different than saying and. In this case, both things have to be true. That's right. But in this case here, both things do not have to be true. Either right. one. Can Either be true. or. Yep. Mm -hmm. I've seen these get pretty scary and confusing. How do you figure that stuff out when you're overwhelmed and you're like, well, if true and not or, how do you deal with that? You can use your, um, you can, either break down the conditions into temporary variables so you can look at each side and figure out which one is true or false. Mm -hmm. You can use the debugger, yep. um, which is a very um, common thing that our C-sharp devs do in DevKit and in other, other tools to look at expressions um, as they're being run. Mm -hmm. Or um, you could, I guess you could use your brain and step through the code <laughs> in your head and try to figure out like a magician. Yeah. Um, what I recommend people do is learn about what are called truth tables. Yeah. Because you have a situation here where that's a thing that can be true, and that's a thing that can be true. So you have to know what you're doing. And this is a challenge when we're learning how to code, is do I know what I actually want? Because if I'm not sure what I want, how am I going to be able to express it to the computer? And as soon right. as you get into ifs, there's true and true, there's false and false, there's true and false, yep. there's false and true. There's four different things that can go on here, and I need to know what I expect. And when I write that code, it's going to run exactly as I wrote it. And you can chain ands, ors, xors, all kinds of operations in a single if statement. Mm -hmm. So it can get complex understanding like which parts of that statement are true and false, and how they apply to running each of the branches in that your code right there. Exactly. All right. So that is learning how to do if statements. We're going to go and build on top of that in a moment, and we're going to learn about loops 